Hello, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I'm going to focus on the scenarios around spreadsheet ML and presentation ML. In the last screencast, I focused on the scenarios around word processing ML, and we saw that the three main scenarios are document generation, extracting data and content from an OpenXML document, and transformations of word processing documents to another form, such as HTML or XML. The two scenarios around spreadsheet ML are parallel to the first two scenarios around word processing ML. The most common use of spreadsheet ML is to generate a spreadsheet, and the second most common use of spreadsheet ML is to extract data from a spreadsheet thereby using that spreadsheet as a source of data for some other process. So let's talk first about spreadsheet generation. The most common use is for a user to download data from an enterprise resource planning system or an accounting system. Often, accountants or information workers need to do specialized analysis or specialized processing of data the appropriate way to accomplish these tasks is to download the data and then manipulate that data in a tool that they are very familiar with, such as Excel. Another example of downloading data is downloading custom content from websites. My bank has a feature whereby I can download all of the transactions for a certain period of time as an Excel spreadsheet. This could be handily accomplished by generation of an OpenXML spreadsheet server-side and then enabling the end user to download that spreadsheet. Recently, I wrote an article and recorded a screencast around building an ASP.NET web application with OpenXML functionality. This is prototype code that you could use in combination with other spreadsheet generation code to build a website that enables the end user to download the custom spreadsheet after you have generated it. Some of the focus in this example ASP.NET web application is around displaying docx files as HTML. However, the code that I present in this screencast around uploading files, modifying OpenXML files, and downloading OpenXML files is applicable to spreadsheet ML. Another place where we see the ability to download spreadsheets is the ability to download data from SharePoint. You can export any list in SharePoint as a spreadsheet. This is a very handy and useful way to download that data and then further manipulate that data. However, sometimes the out-of-the-box feature to download spreadsheets doesn't have the right functionality. Recently, as part of a project, I wrote code that implemented a specialized download that could download data from multiple SharePoint lists into a single spreadsheet. Here, Brian Jones and Zaid Rajabi detail a solution to export data from the AdventureWorks database into an OpenXML spreadsheet. There's another scenario where using the OpenXML SDK really provides the best option available, and that is when you need to generate a spreadsheet that has perhaps a million rows. Recently, I dealt with an insurance company and they had the need to export data that had hundreds of thousands of rows into an Excel spreadsheet. This would enable their end users to open up the spreadsheet, go modify data as appropriate, save the spreadsheet, and then they could import that spreadsheet back into their database. Here, Brian Jones and Zayed Rajabi detail a streaming solution for writing extremely large Excel files with the OpenXML SDK. When writing very large Excel files, the problem is not so much one of how much CPU time you use or how fast your disk I.O. is. 
Instead, the problem is really one of how much memory you use. What is the size of your working set? If you were to use a traditional document object model approach where the entire workbook and worksheet is kept in memory, you would run out of memory in a .NET application after only a few hundred thousand rows. Using this streaming approach, you can create spreadsheets with literally millions of rows. Recently, I wrote a blog post and recorded a screencast that shows how to use link to XML to generate huge spreadsheets. I've published that blog post and screencast on openxmldeveloper.org. The other important scenario around spreadsheet ML is that of data extraction. In other words, using the spreadsheet as a data source. I've heard it said that Excel is arguably the most used database in the entire world. Many of us have had the experience of using a spreadsheet as a database of sorts, treating the rows in a workbook as records in a database. And of course, after putting all that data into a workbook and worksheet, you want to get at that data. Some time ago, I wrote a little bit of code that enables you to use language integrated query to query Excel tables. You can retrieve all of the data in a table given its table name, and you can write code such that you're referring to the columns in the table by their column names. Here's an example of the use of that code. After opening the spreadsheet, you use this table method passing the name of the table. You can then call the table rows method, which returns an I enumerable of a type called row. You can then use the default indexer of that row class, passing in the column name into that default indexer, and thereby retrieving the value of that cell. I have a real world need to do this, I maintain a list of all of the open XML content in an Excel spreadsheet. I needed to generate the data that drives the open XML content browser that you can find on the front page of openxmldeveloper.org. This is the content browser right here. If you want to find all of the content on SpreadsheetML, you can click a checkbox here and it'll immediately return a list of links to all kinds of content, screencasts, articles, and blog posts on SpreadsheetML. If you need to find the intersection of two of these keywords, then you can, for instance, also click on XLS X generation, and that will return those pieces of content that have those two keywords in common. If you want to find only those pieces of content that include screencasts or videos, you can click the only video checkbox and it will show you those two pieces of content. This content browser is an OpenXML SpreadsheetML application. Here's another example that shows how to use language integrated query to query tables in Excel. This example is coded in the strongly typed object model of the OpenXML SDK v2. This topic is a visual how-to that includes a video. On Brian Jones and Zayed Rajabi's blog, Zayed presents an example here that shows how to read data from a spreadsheet. Key point about this is that it's easy enough to read data out of spreadsheet ML. It's not very complicated. The last scenario that I'm going to talk about in this screencast is that of generation of presentations using presentation ML. Some time ago, I wrote a blog post and recorded a screencast around the topic of using a template presentation to generate multiple presentations. One of the problems around using a presentation as a template is that Presentations do not have a feature such as content controls that enable you to delineate content. However, there's a very easy way to work around this. 
The way that I detailed in this presentation is to use a less than hash and a hash greater than to delineate the metadata that is stored in the presentation. There are some very specific techniques that make it easy to process the text in a presentation looking for the less than hash and hash greater than. If you are in the market for a solution that uses a template presentation to generate multiple presentations, I recommend that you read this blog post and watch the accompanying video. Another place you can look for guidance and example code around presentation ML is Power Tools for OpenXML. Power Tools for OpenXML is comprised of a number of commandlets that enable you to do interesting things with OpenXML word processing ML documents, presentations, and spreadsheets. There's a commandlet in Power Tools for OpenXML called merge dash PPTX that enables you to take any number of existing presentations and grab slides out of each one of those presentations. You have the option to include or not include the master slide with each one of these source presentations. And what this enables you to do is to pull in the theme from one presentation, use slides from another presentation, and so on, and generate a completely new presentation from all of those component parts. The merge PBTX commandlet is a thin wrapper around Presentation Builder, which is a class in Power Tools for OpenXML. This means that if you need to integrate this type of capability in your OpenXML SDK application, it's trivial to do so. I'll demonstrate this commandlet. I'll start a PowerShell integrated scripting environment at this location. You can get help on the merge pptx commandlet. I'll tell it I want to see the examples. What you do is you set up any number of presentations as your sources. You specify whether you want to include the master slide or not by specifying true or false. If you don't specify a starting slide and a count of slides, then it takes the entire presentation. If you want to, you can specify a starting slide and a count of slides. Let's create these two input presentations. I'll use another commandlet in PowerTools for OpenXML, the new-pptx commandlet. One of the options is to tell it I want a presentation with five slides. Now I'll use the new pptx to create input 2.pptx. And I'll tell this one that I want 10 slides in it. There are a lot of different options that you can specify to new pptx to create a whole variety of sample presentations. Let's take a look at these really quickly. Here is the input 1.pptx. It's purple and it has five slides as part of the text of each of the slides. Here is the input 2.pptx. It's got this green theme and it has parenthesis 10 slides on each of the slides. We want to note this so that we can see the operation of the merge pptx commandlet properly. The first example takes all of both presentations using the master slide of the first presentation. So this means that the entire new presentation will have that purple theme. Let's look at the result. And we have a new presentation with 15 slides in it and they all have the purple theme. The second example takes the first two slides of both presentations, including the master slides from both. And we see what we expect to see. One of the approaches that you can use if you need to remove a slide from a presentation is you can use the same presentation for multiple sources. In this case, it takes the first slide 
and then it takes from the third slide to the end. This example also shows operation completely in memory when it returns this new PML variable right here. This is actually just the PML document wrapper over a byte array. This is just in memory processing of OpenXML. It then uses this save as to save it as merge 03.pptx. This also uses the verbose argument so that we can see a little more of what's going on behind the scenes. Now, when we look at merge 03.pptx, we can see that it took the first slide and then it skipped to the third slide and there are a total of four slides in this presentation. Using this functionality, you can slice and dice presentations just about any way you want to. These are the type of scenarios where OpenXML really shines. You can make a parameterized database of slides that you can pull from to produce a presentation that is custom for a specific sales scenario. This is put together with plain old OpenXML SDK code and power tools for OpenXML, so it's easy to use in your application. In the last screencast, I presented the three main scenarios around word processing ML. And in this one, I presented the two main scenarios around spreadsheet ML and the one main scenario around presentation ML.